the back line and grenades run at us. He came in all time. Okay then! Yakub drops in with a pile driver and he's got two. Telex went down first, no resurrect. And Blase was second with a wrecking ball in the fight. have opened this fight up in a flash. It was over. Janu down as well. And the Shark, they may have done it. They're Only bumper right remaining. Hawksalt just trying to stay on the point. Oh, but that's going to be it. The grab from Sinatra comes in. And the Shark have done it. They are your stage two champions. We're back, fellow owl enthusiasts. Uh, after a few weeks without seeing my precious co-host here, we're back to talk Overwatch League on Esports and 30. I'm AJ Fry. This is Ron Renantharo Lee. It hasn't been long enough yet, my friend. What? I mean, what? A AJ, <laughs> you gotta be nice to me because I, do? Uh -oh. because What's the I know something the audience doesn't. You, I'm sure you know lots of things and the audience that doesn't. You've fallen out of diamond. Yes. Again. Yes. See, you know. The road to success is not, you know, always straight, but you are definitely the Overwatch not road is just mostly down for me. I can, yeah, yeah you, oh, we'll been... we'll get you there, but only if you're nice to me okay. on broadcast. All right. Yeah, that's well, our agreement. Well, thanks, Ron. You look great today. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> let's celebrate our reunion with a little bit of stage three preview. Uh, before we get to that, we've got another good friend, uh, Liam Mangachu Campbell, on the line. And before we get to that, well, here's a quick look back at stage two. with his tracer soon trying to duck out. Oh, 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 unbelievable! Okay. Just before that, getting the shot on Godspeed. Three now for soon. Now going to be expiring. The second tick really going to be there. Jonak, oh man, just takes him down right up in the face of a bastion. Finds a triple kill as Gino and Ark also fall. Let's go ahead and make it four. You got more for me, Jonak. Let's go ahead and see it. Sansom's going to be dumping the bomb. Trying to make it back in, but there it is. She has your like. Oh! Oh, that's a huge one! Gonna fall down! So now Tanel's a okay. back there with the extra damage, super swing, and Lippy in the corner. Uh, Can't do anything uh, about it. How have you come back from this? Lost in a haze of bloodlust, and they wake up with the lost message on their screen. They've got to keep it together, but Shadow Bear, that was very classy. Geo and Bank Jack both fall quick. Oh, exception! <laughs> what a connection! Using this DPS defense. Whoa! Nice shot from Shadow Bird. Oh, damage off the wall. Gets Char the way out. And a okay. punch. What? A quad for Shadowburn. Shadowburn. Oh, comes around the side with a poison trap of all things. Going to be taking him down by Corey. Now the Corey gets another one on the hand feet. The bomb thrown in. Sounds like just trying to zone him out. Corey looking for another angle. Spots him. He takes out Neko. And this could be it. Ivy. Another one. Be eliminated. Right off the bat, Decay has to flee. Hydration down again. That's a double kill for Jim already. Is there anything this guy can't play? He's coming back in, and Sombra is the turning now, and Decay down. He's down. Jinmu with three in a row right now, making four as he takes out Roar. He's getting harassed in the back line, and grenades went at us. He came in all time. Okay, then. Yakul drops in with a pile driver, and he's got two. Telex went down first, no resurrect, and Blase was second with a wrecking ball in the fight. Have opened this fight up in a flash. It was over. Might just have to take some shade here, as the sky is just filled with projectiles of damage. And as a Hangzhou spark just handed him out, shot after shot and hit point by hit point, the Spitfire cut down the size. And now it's going to be a transcendence for Bidoshin on the point to try and keep this thing alive. But they just get handed an L. Summon Su knocked out. He's taken out soon. Janu down as well. And the shock, they may have done it. They're Only bumper right remaining. Hawksalt just trying to stay on the point. But that's going to be it. The grab from Sinatra comes in. And the shock have done it. They Yep, stage two was full of upsets, goats, and rivalries, and at the end of it all, Shock completed their perfect stage. So with the second stage in the rear view now, and stage three just on the horizon, we got a ton to talk about. Welcome to the show, Mangachu! Hello. 
Hello. <laughs> How's it going? Very well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm glad to be back. Uh, great to have you on the show. Uh, let's get your thoughts on the conclusion of the second stage. Shock ultimately upsetting the Titans, giving them their first L of the entire thing for the Titans, basically. They hadn't lost yet, but Shock uh, having that golden stage. Is this something they can potentially do again here in stage three? I have full faith in Shock. Uh, I'm very good friends with Super and Sinatra. I think they're both amazing players. Super, probably the most improved out of any player in Overwatch League from season one. Wow. Sinatra popping off as well. Um, I've been very impressed overall with their gameplay, and I don't see their train stopping anytime soon. Is yeah. there's something magical between the two of them that lets them play the way that they do? Do they have like a special connection? Like w for you, when you're watching it, what is it about their play style that makes them so impressive? Just the aggression, I think, and, and their ego, to put it lightly. I think they're both <laughs> extremely confident with their own ability to play the game. And it shows just like with the stuff that they do and how they just disrespect pretty much anybody who they're playing against. Right. Yeah, I mean, confidence is a big thing as a competitor. If you already think you're going to lose before you step into the ring, why mm -hmm. even bother being there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, given that the stage is still in, you know, uh, GOATs, obviously, they're still in their wheelhouse. Uh, do you think the upcoming changes in the next patch are going to change uh, how good they are, you know, maybe we'll see more Bunker or things like that. I think Bunker is a little cheesy, if I gotta be honest. I, I'm a fan of cheese, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Torbjorn specialist. Yeah, you get that cheese list, is my specialty. <laughs> um, but I think Bunker has a lot of flaws when it comes to like losing to spam comps like Pharah, Hanzo. If you throw a Pharah, Hanzo junk right at them, they're just kind of dead. Hmm. But if you, if you go goats, you know, you have the defense matrix, Arya shields, Ryan shield, all these abilities to just like deny the damage from bunker or from those spam comps. So like chances are there's going to be a lot of goats. Well, I know we're playing around with McCree right now on the PTR with this super buff. I don't know if that'll be implemented <laughs> in time for it to see action in this uh, stage three. But if, if it does, will that change the meta up substantially in your mind? From what I've heard, it won't be in Overwatch League Stage 3, but if it did, I don't think it'd have that much of an impact. It'd be good for shutting down Pharah's, but Pharah isn't really a relevant hero to begin with. Mm. And McCree gets shut down really hard by both Ryan Shield and Defense Matrix, which are both two very commonly played uh, comps, or heroes in GOATS, so... Yeah, well, so we got the bad omen coming straight from the horse's mouth here. It doesn't seem like we'll see any more of that DPS play, mm -hmm. which is so unfortunate because good players like Mangachi, you know, you really like to see them pop off. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, you know, maybe that spells more bad news for some of these challengers that want to take the top spots, teams like Dallas and Gladiators and Philly that all have great DPS players. Do you think they have what it takes to maybe bre breach that top spot uh, in a GOATS meta still without any big changes? Um, I think... With the way GOATS works, the meta kind of advances in like a weekly fashion. People discover new things that makes like one hero really good for this week and then people figure out how to counter it and it just kind of rotates. Mm -hmm. So with how good Shock and Vancouver are right now, I don't see them ever falling behind or people being able to catch up. Wow, so, so is that thing that gives them the edge is their ability to adapt, uh, adapt quickly? Do you have any examples of maybe uh, this weekly change in GOATs that they've learned to play with uh, or deal with really well? Um, to compare it to contenders, uh, the meta has changed a lot. The things have gone from like abusing double boops, so you use a D.Va or Fly to boop somebody, and then a Lucio is wall riding, getting ready to follow up on that boop to boop somebody out of the location get them away from their team and get a free pick. But people have started to like pay attention to stuff like that, to shut down the Lucio or the Diva to make sure that uh, your Ryan Hart or maybe even your Zarya can't, can't get booped out. Well, we're going to talk more contenders in just a bit, but let's go back to our, uh, our main league here for a second. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we were just talking about you know San Francisco Shock, Vancouver Titans, just no one's going to touch them, it the seems. Right. Yeah. yeah. But in the top of the pack, you got your New York, you got your LA Gladiators. Are there any of these teams that could potentially pose a threat, or, or who do you think is going to come out, I guess, third overall? Because it seems <laughs> like it's pretty determined that one and two are the Titans and Shock, respectively. Uh, I'm pretty confident in New York. I, I worked with them for a while. I've seen their goats. It's, it's just like the choking in playoffs, which has always been a thing for them since yeah. before even Overwatch League. Do you think they'll choke again if they make it to stage three playoffs? 
I hope not. Because <laughs> I love those guys. Like, what is it? We'll is see. it? Is it just like the locker room environment? Is it just they're cursed forever? Do you have any insight? Like, I think it's just nerves. You know, there's a lot more pressure when you're going into playoffs compared to regular season. Okay. If we had a complete roster lineup change, would that <laughs> like does it seem to be something that's just sitting on the shoulders of all the players on that team now? Is it already in, ingrained within the mentality of the team that oh, we always choke in playoffs? I mean, they, there's. All the Overwatch teams are still so new, fundamentally, compared to your yeah. dynasties of your real sports, dare I say. Right. It just seems so ridiculous that something has been applied to them in this short span of time. Can they ever shake this curse? Uh, new York's been a team for a pretty long time, even before Overwatch League. They got picked True. up as a full roster. They were on uh, LW Blue, and back then they were also known for choking very hard in playoffs. <laughs> so it's kind of unfortunate, but... If they work on their mentality and just try and like drop that stuff, I'm mm. sure things will be fine. Well, we're at an interesting place here with the middle of the pack teams. We've got four all sitting at seven and seven on their record so far. Uh, that's Atlanta, Boston, Seoul, and Toronto. Of those four teams, are any standing out to you? I mean, you can go for the home team, the Toronto Defiance, <laughs> being that you're from Oakville. But uh, who do you really see as rising out of that pack? I got faith in Toronto, and I got faith in Philly. I think both of those teams have amazing tank lines. Um, with the new pickups for Toronto, I've played against both Gauze and Sharik many times, and they have they've kicked my butt, to put it lightly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think they'll be able to gel well with the other, uh, like the uh, yeah, dominantly Korean, Korean mixed, team? Now, right. now it's a mixed roster. Uh, I, th I think it depends on, one, how the coaching handles it in terms of what language they want to use majority of the time. I'm sure putting the two North American players or two Western players into an all Korean team would be pretty difficult for communication. I've gone through that mm -hmm. with XL2. Um, it's definitely a bit of a struggle, but a couple of the players on Toronto do have experience with Western players. So there is a chance that it could pop off and just work really well. Yeah, I mean, I am 37 speaks both languages, so I'm right. sure he's a good yeah. go-between for everyone. Yeah, I, I think so. It's really important to have a liaison if you're going to go for like a mixed roster to keep things in check, right? Absolutely. Um, and we've seen in a lot of these, more of the teams on the bottom that uh, are potentially mixed or not, uh, the big outlier being Mayhem, Mayhem uh, Florida Mayhem, obviously, that was mixed and then opted to go the all-Korean route, yeah. whereas we've seen Toronto kind of do the opposite. Yeah. Um, do you think like that that move will pay off more in stage three for Florida Mayhem going all Korean? Yeah, I think so. Um, being a part of Mayhem for pretty much the up until now for uh, season two, I've known what's going on, and being a mixed roster kind of caused some problems. So going all Korean and just focusing on being able to speak one language definitely helped a lot. Okay, I mean, that's interesting, because we've seen a lot of success from mixed rosters on the upper end of the league, obviously Shock being a big one. What's the big differentiating factor that makes it so some mixed teams work out so well and some teams don't? Good players. Just the personalities. <laughs> you could, could, yeah. I think it comes down to mainly personalities, though. You know, sometimes people just don't work well when they have to, like, learn a whole new language. It's pretty difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, let's talk uh, Charge uh, really quickly. They've uh, picked up some new players with Nero and Only Wish uh, and Rise moving to the, the main team. So uh, any thoughts on Charge? Are they going to be a force to be reckoned with in mid-tier? I mean, I feel ridiculous asking these questions sometimes because it's just like so clear in this league right now that San Francisco <laughs> and Titans are just and like, exactly what we they're mean, in yeah. a different league yeah. and then we're talking about everyone else in Overwatch Yeah, league, we kind of feel like we're going through the checklist and we're seeing like, <laughs> are any, these guys going to make like that substantial of a difference when yeah. Goto is so teamwork oriented? But yeah. who knows? I mean, you've, you've uh, I mean, in the contenders teams, people know each other. Do you have an opinion on, on players like Only Wish or Rise who are from Korea and people might not know so much about? I've been very impressed with both of them. I've I've scrimmed against them. I've played against them in ranked or with them. And even though like there's a bit of a language barrier, I've just been overall very impressed with their gameplay. Hmm. That's good to know. So optimistic things coming up from the charge. Yeah. Yeah. What about any of our like bottom barrel teams right now <laughs> in the main league? Uh, any uh, um, hope for uh, like the Justice or for Paris or any of these teams going to be able Houston. to turn things around and actually climb the the, the ranks a bit? I got a lot of faith in Valiant. Really? Oh. Yes. Well, they did pick uh, up a bunch of your former teammates. They stole my boys, Fact <laughs> Fiction and Shaxx. It's unfortunate. But I, I think 
fact fiction is probably the best leader that I've played with in like any esport ever. Wow. I think he's a very commanding leader who is extremely passionate about yeah. what he does, and playing with him for this season has been amazing. That praise is very high. I bet that sort of yeah. thing is like hard to replicate, especially in a game like Overwatch. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely a one of a kind thing, you know, like a lot of people just don't really have the passion to play goats. Goats <laughs> is a very especially as brig players, I know a lot of brig players are very upset about stage three being all goats, but uh fact fiction is just a fantastic teammate. Yeah, I heard recently on your Twitter you're not you're not so happy playing Brig twenty four seven on the ranked ladder and you know I can relate. I don't know if AJ can. You know, down in uh, Diamond or wherever he's at, but I'm sure you I'm know. I'm just happy when I have people who actually use comms in my <laughs> <laughs> rank. Actually, games. though, uh, I am a huge fan of Brig. Really? I love. I You're a love enthusiast. playing Brig. That's exactly just the same yeah. show. I am the only flex DPS in existence. I'm pretty sure that actually enjoys playing Brig. <laughs> Even Paintbrush, your, your teammate, came on the show and he was like, "Man, I hate seeing Brig all the time, but here's you in like the locker room practicing your swings on training bots." I mm -hmm. bet. So you know, I love mm -hmm. it. I love it so much. Uh, let's dip a little bit more into Academy. You know, obviously where you've been playing for a long time. We've been seeing a lot of teams straight up drop their rosters. We, you know, like uh, Energy is gone. Paris has dropped their roster. Uh, mayhem, as you know, so so obviously. For anyone who's watching this who isn't so up on contenders and why this might be happening, maybe you guys can break down why we're seeing this huge shift in uh, the contenders league. I think it's just money, to be honest. So um, yeah, you know, it's, like is it is it the, you know drying up or do you think it's just like really top heavy? It's really top heavy. I mean, it's Overwatch League. You gotta invest a lot into it. You know, they're they're put in very stressful situations where they're playing the game like two to three times the amount that I'm even playing it. So, and they get all these resources, and it's just like it's a lot of stress for players. I so, mean, yeah. to have to have the org invest into that is really important. Uh, I think tier two can be better, for sure. Um, there's nothing that I can obviously talk about, but. I think 2020 would be a good year for season or for tier two. 2020. Hmm. Yeah. All right, mark it on your calendars. There's something big coming. Uh, no leaks, obviously. But isn't mm -hmm. so much of this change up within contenders in reaction to the new rule regarding how many uh, native players you can have on your team or must have on your team, and how is that affecting things? Um, academy teams can be put in literally whatever region they want, from what I've heard. That's why Fusion Uni is going over to Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they definitely um, want to hold on to the Korean All Stars and not have to. Let anyone go if they don't have to. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's that's good to know. I mm. think, like, on the topic of tier two needing more support as well, uh, someone that's been in the tier two scene from a while, unjustifiably, I might say. Um, <laughs> what are some big improvements you can see coming to the tier two scene that would help lift it up and maybe um, elevate it in viewership or make it something more appealing to to people in general? More lands is pretty much what it comes down to. I think online competitions are just stupid. They're way too inconsistent with just lag problems or bad PCs or, you know, internal problems with being long distance. It just makes everything more difficult. Having everybody in one location would just be a better experience for everyone. Mm. Well, ultimately, what are you hoping to do next? I know you're currently a free agent, so, you know, the world is kind of your oyster. You've got the skills, you've got the talent. Where do you want to see yourself uh, moving forward to from here? Uh, right now, I'm just focusing on making money. You know, I'm, I'm streaming. I started doing private coaching recently. Um, I've been scrimming with teams. There should be an announcement for what team that I'll be playing on in the near future. Uh, it should be a little bit of a surprise to people, but not too big of one if you've been a part of the TR2 scene for a while. Mm. Okay. I mean, so obviously you can't tell us like who you're going to be playing with or under what org or whatever, right? We're not going to pry and we're not even going to ask for any hints. Um, but I do sense a question coming, though. There, yeah, there is a question. <laughs> right? Give us a hint really quick. Oh, you're going to give us a hint? <laughs> give us just a small one to, to kind of keep me sated. I've played with them in the past. Oh. All right. OK, well, I mean, you've been on a lot of teams, so I don't think that's yeah. too spoilery. Mm. Uh, let's say, so here's, here's a question I've been kind of uh, wanting to ask you a lot, because we're approaching World Cup season. Obviously, Team Canada, um, you know, you may have worked together alongside people like Jane and stuff. Uh, where does your heart lie for the World Cup right now? Are you, are you trying to, like, vie for it? Are you going to play in the World Cup as your next uh, kind of playing ground? I would like to. I love the World Cup. 
I love going to BlizzCon, meeting fans, and playing on that stage. That stage is amazing. And how does that differ from like a t Contenders or even Overwatch League, you think, like in terms of exposure? Uh, just a lot of the support from Blizzard. They kind of shove the World Cup in everybody's face. You know, they have the launcher in game. They say, ooh, watch this. You can see it in game now. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where they test all this stuff. So I think it's a very good way to show new talent. And just to take things in a completely different direction uh, while we got gotcha, you, what are you hoping for in terms of the next hero to uh, arrive in Overwatch? Is there something that uh, you think would really mix things up even more for uh, future metas? I would love a good off tank with mobility because right now the only one that exists is D.Va and that's kind of the reason that she's picked all the time is because she's the only hero that can really move when you're playing the off tank role. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just any form of off tank that can move around the map without being a big hitbox or Zarya. Yeah, when Wrecking Ball first came out, I was kind of thinking that like maybe he'd fulfill more of an off tanky role. Obviously, we we see that that parallel with Diva him being super super mobile. Mm. Um, if we were to get like, uh, let's say, a different main tank, for example, instead of uh, Arisu stationary, a Reinhardt stationary, um, do you have any sort of ideas and ways they could maybe impact the meta that leads us out of goats? I don't think there's anything that can beat goats, to be honest. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I just think the overall design of each character works so well together that so there's not a whole lot that can beat it, yeah. Oh. What so, if we added a couple more DPS characters in there? I mean, obviously with Marie, uh, McCree getting the huge buff here, I just, I'm, it looks like Blizzard does want to bust up the GOAT's stale meta somewhat, but they don't want to lock into 222. There's another question for you. What are your thoughts on that potential uh, lock-in at 222? I would love it. I am a huge fan of 222. I've been, before when I was a passionate Brig hater, I really wanted it. And <laughs> now that I kind of. enlightened. Yeah, now, now I like Brig, but I still want 222. I, I think it's just healthy for the game. It, it allows them to at least fix ranked as well by adding roll queue or something. But like, there's just a lot of things that the game could fix by forcing 222, in my opinion. You're not afraid of, I, I think a lot of people say that, you know, oh, we're just going to get the same old thing all the time, even if it's 222. Is that a viable concern like that people have? Uh, I don't think so. I think a lot of the comps are very map dependent. And that, that's kind of like with the way that the balance is going. I think certain characters will be very strong on certain maps. Like, I wouldn't see myself running Torbjorn on King's Road defense, but I could see myself running it on Horizon or Hollywood. Mm. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, we are getting the wrap here, but before we let you go, let's look right ahead to the conclusion of this second season of Overwatch, not even the Stage 3 playoffs. Is it going to be the Shock ultimately taking it, or can the Vancouver Titans hold on to their like lossless in the main season record and ultimately win the big championship? I believe in Shock. I love Shock. I love he everybody is friends on that with team. some of their players, though. No bias. He, d he did just say he's buddies with... Biased. It's okay. <laughs> buds with Super and Sinastra. All right, well, Mangachu, it's been a pleasure chatting with you, my friend. Best of luck to you moving forward. Can't wait to see what new team you're back on again. <laughs> Thank you, man. Man, I just wish the guy had said something insightful. Well, what? <laughs> you're mean to too. everyone today. We just got him back. You got like a chip on your shoulder. I don't know what's going on, AJ. Uh, it's just all these uh, changes to the game, including the introduction of the replay. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. You yeah. must be as well, being no, an analyst. It is so useful. I, I, yeah. like, I, I love it. I, I'm, I wish it came sooner, but uh, you know, better late than never, you yeah. know, as they say. I'm excited just as a creative person because now it means that we can actually get some like really good uh, machinima. Out oh, of machinima! Overwatch. Yeah, I used it's to like... watch those like those old ones on YouTube, like Red Red versus Blue. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm excited. Ooh, it'd be awesome if we get some like people that could uh, do the voices of the characters really well. Mm. You know, imitate them and make like our cool die, storyline. Die, die, more. die! You're no, we we'll work on close. it. No, I think you'd be better at uh, Torbjorn. Torbjorn. Yeah. I don't know. I, can't, I don't know about Torbjorn. No, really. No. I, mean, I don't you, play enough Torbjorn to know any of his lines. You, you do a good Swedish impression. Oh sure. You're just yeah, pimping I'm, me to do this right now. Yeah, it's not going to happen. All right. Well, we tried. We tried, <laughs> audience. We really tried. Um, but what, let's talk about some of these other custom game modes. Yeah. Uno is the most popular game mode. <laughs> in it's Overwatch. a little misleading. It's a little misleading okay. because um, so Jeff Kaplan went on the forums recently and uh, outlined a post where they went down the list of all the most popular workshop modes in North America and in Korea. Okay. Uno was at the top of the list for North America. Yeah. But it's, the stats are a little bit skewed because there's a ton of aim trainers out there 
not everyone's using the same code. A lot of people are making their own variations. Yeah. So I think cumulatively, aim trainers are probably at the top or some skill building workshop. Yeah. But because there's so many of them that detract from the total number, Uno sits at the top and it's good old Uno, card game reverse no, skip. But how? Uh, how, how do you people play make, it, ha people make in, it happen. But like, what What do you do? You have are there cards card in the game? Yes. In your They're, hand? They, you got to play to find out. Got to play it to find out. But you know, Uno, Uno might be the most popular in North America, mm. but in Korea, uh, the most popular game mode is something called high blood pressure panic mode or something like that, where it's just, it's like um, all the cooldowns are jacked up to like they're, you know, they're basically non-existent. Right. Uh, you can dash if you're, you know, you have your ultimate all the time. You, you have like a, a ton of HP. Yeah. It's just like, Overwatch on crack, basically. It's okay. like turned up to uh, like a million. <laughs> um, and Korean, you know, that shows that, you know, the Koreans really like high mechanical games, like losing, using their abilities a lot. Right. And North Americans like sitting on the couch and playing good old, you know. <laughs> good, yeah. good old. Different, difference in culture Uno. a little bit, right? Oh, I just can't imagine a May with constant all just freezing everybody. Well, you have Diva with like down. the million matrix and uh, just yeah. looks Negate, around all eating stuff. all those, right? All right, yeah. there you go. All right, uh, a serious topic to end on. Uh, Nate Nanzer uh, leaving Blizzard as <laughs> Commissioner of the Overwatch League. Your reactions to this? It seems like there's uh, a bit of trouble brewing behind the scenes at uh, yeah. Blizzard. So uh, Nate Nanzer, you know, our beloved Overwatch League Commissioner, I think he's done a great job so far. Uh, he's recently departed and is now going to join Epic Games and help them out in their scene, you know, yeah, Fortnite. Yeah, they, they need a lot of help. They don't have very much money these days, Epic Games. <laughs> I guess not. But, uh, I mean, we all know Fortnite is a big cash cow and yeah. you know, money, money talks, right? But besides that, there's been rumors recently that there's going to be even more uh, departures, more leaves from uh, higher ups at Blizzard, oh. citing some, you know, insider reporting, some some um, uh, disagreements with how Activision wants to uh, kind of market the Overwatch League. They really want to push a traditional sports approach, but other people at Blizzard have been there for for decades, are saying, you know, you know, esports is different. It's its own beast. You can't treat it the same way. Mm. Um, and I think there's this tension that's really coming to a boil now, because we're we're in our second. Uh, season over well, Overwatch exactly League. Exactly halfway through the second season. Exactly halfway through, and our commissioner's gone. Yeah. Um, and he's the one that kind of plotted out the whole idea. It's not all Nate Nazar, obviously, but him and his team um, had like a three year project, you know, try to get localization to happen by the yeah. end of season three. And he's, we're halfway through, and he's, he's already bounced. So I don't know if that means good things or bad things. Probably bad things, but, you know. Yeah, you'd like to see someone with their plan, you know, come to fruition, see it the full way through. Yeah, but, successful uh, or not, we want to see him kind of ride, yeah, ride it out. deliver the project that he envisioned. Yeah. So. How do you feel about the traditional sports approach with Overwatch? Do you feel like it's it's appropriate? Well, do you feel like it's 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 too artificial? Uh, I like the idea of localized teams. I mean, that to me is the big uh, differential from Overwatch League versus any of the other uh, big leagues out there in, in eSports. You've got yeah. your local team to root for. You can generate your fan base and know that your friends are into the same team and the same player that you are. Um, I mean, <clears throat> eSports stands on its own in terms of uh, fans and support. Obviously, it's, it's a new thing compared to traditional sports. Um, I think you got to take some of the original sports feel, but maintain that celebration of nerds and geeks and, and yeah. make it for us, you know, smarty pants, basically. Right, yeah, it is Pride Month, and we take pride in, in being the nerds that we are and being yeah. the people that we are, no matter what shape, size, or color, or uh, orientation. Exactly. Uh, and Overwatch is a game that I think is beautifully uh, demonstrating that with, with its themes of inclusivity and diversity and stuff. So mm. let's end on that note. I think that's a yeah, great place to conclude and things. Overwatch League, not dead, please. Yes. I need we'll a job. have uh, some exciting. Uh, results from uh, the next half, or stage three, stage I should three. say. Stage three. There we go. But that is uh, the end of our uh, topics for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Be sure to follow us on the socials, and thank you to Mangachu for calling in. Uh, we've got more Unmuted in Esports in 30 for you right here on Squad tomorrow. Until then, have a great evening. See you in the future.